Hi, I'm Dr. Nishchita Anil and welcome to podcast with Dr. Gaurang Sudhir Deshpande who is consultant immunologist and rheumatologist at Spash Hospital in Fantry Road, Bengaluru. Welcome to our show, sir. So today he will be taking us into fascinating world of immunology and rheumatology. So coming to what exactly is rheumatology, it's a specialty of medicine which deals with the disease of immune system which are also called autoimmune diseases where our immune system cells mistakenly attack our own cells. So he'll be talking about autoimmune diseases and JIA today. So today's topic is small joint and big challenge and understanding juvenile arthritis. So coming to my first question, so what exactly is immunity and how does our immune system work? So immunity is our defense system. Like uh, we, India as a country, we have our army, uh, navy and air forces. So immunity is defense system of our body. It protects us against viruses, bacteria and many other organisms, which are also called as pathogens. These organisms, their size is as small as few nanometers to as big as some centimeters as we see in some worms. So our immunity, it protects us from these pathogens. It also helps in the healing. In case if you get hurt or injured, the immune system helps you healing. Also, it works harmoniously with other system like hematological system, endocrinologic system to make our body function. So this is what immunity is. How common are these immunological conditions in children and what are the most common immunological diseases in children? We see immunological disorders in uh, children. So they can be divided in the three categories. So to explain it, I will give you uh, one example. Uh, suppose there is one residential society, like a society which is having many people staying under it, under many wings. So let's say it has A wing, B wing, C wings. So let consider that residential complex as a human body and this multiple wings like A wings, B wings, C wings, like human organs, like kidney, heart and brain. And every uh, residential complex or society, they will have some security system. So this security system is like immune system of our body. So suppose this uh, security person, they go on strike and they are not at all coming. So there is no uh, security for that society. In same way, if the immune system is not working or has completely become non-functional in human, it is called as immunodeficiency. So when there is no system working, so these children, they become susceptible for multiple infections with viruses and bacteria. So this disorder is called as primary immunodeficiency. Usually it is genetics mediated. Now coming to the second immunological disorders, which we can see in children, it is auto-inflammatory syndromes. So in this, the security system of the building, in that one of the security person or the system, it feels that there is some danger going in the society. For example, there is some fire which is caught in house and one of the residents is stuck into it. But actually it is not happening. That is just the perception of the security system. So it tries to go to save its residents. It breaks the window, it breaks the door to take out the residents out of the fire. It spreads the water. But all these things causes uh, uh, damage to the residents or houses. So in auto-inflammatory syndromes, even though there is no danger to our body, the immune system feels that there is some dangers and it starts damaging our body. And the third is autoimmune syndromes. In this, the security system, it starts attacking its own residents. So in this, the immune system start attacking its own body cells and harming it. So this is called as autoimmune syndromes. Okay, I think that was the most simplified explanation. So coming to my next question, uh, are these rheumatological and autoimmune problems common in children or is it only confined to adults? Uh, these autoimmune disorders can be seen in children, though they are not as common as they are seen in adults. They are quite uncommon as compared to as seen in adults. The syndromes include juvenile idiopathic arthritis, which is the most common autoimmune condition seen in children. After that, systemic lupus erythematous, we call it juvenile lupus, which is characterized by uh, skin, rash, joint pains and uh, organ involvements like kidney and hematological manifestations like lower blood counts. 
that can also be seen and the other condition is juvenile dermatomyositis in which the muscles and the skin are affected so these are the common autoimmune conditions which can be seen in uh, pediatric patients or children oh, to our parents what are the most common symptoms they can look out for children for any rheumatological condition so if the child is suffering from this autoimmune conditions the most common symptoms include joint pain which are more common in the morning so they have difficulty in getting up in the morning or they pain more severe in the morning hours they have joint swellings they have difficulty in uh, getting up playing and doing all the activities apart from that they can have skin rash they can have high grade fevers they can have uh, like growth disturbances they can have loss of appetite less hunger and because of that there can be reduction in the weight and also there is a feeling of fatigue continuously so this fatigue also is one of the important aspect so these are all the common symptoms which we can see in patients of autoimmune diseases so if your child complains of any of these symptoms please do consult a rheumatologist so coming to today's topic what exactly is juvenile idiopathic arthritis or jia and what are the different types of jia so uh, jia that is juvenile idiopathic arthritis is the chronic inflammation of the joints uh, by chronic usually it lasts more than 6 weeks so uh, when it is more than 6 weeks we call it as chronic so these children they usually have joint pains lasting more than 6 weeks and it involve both joints of upper and lower extremities involving hand and feet and uh, it usually happens below the children of 16 years so chronic inflammation of the joints in children less than 16 years we usually call it as juvenile idiopathic arthritis so what are the different types of jia juvenile idiopathic arthritis has uh, six subtypes the six subtypes are uh, oligoarticular jia in which the number of joints involved are four or less then polyarticular poly itself the name suggest is poly means many so in this uh, more than four joints are involved then there is systemic onset jia in the systemic onset jia fever is the one of the most significant symptom common symptom uh, along with rash and arthritis then there is enthesitis related arthritis so enthesitis related arthritis means enthesitis will be there so what is enthesitis enthesitis is the inflammation of the structures which are attached to bone like tendons on ligaments so they will have this enthesitis like we have at the heel bone uh, around the knee joints there are enthesial inflammation apart from that they will have arthritis predominantly of the lower limb joints like knee ankle and hip also can be involved then there is another variety which is called as psoriatic arthritis which is usually associated with psoriatic skin disease uh, along with the presence of arthritis and the last variety is undifferentiated arthritis in which none of these features are present but there is definite evidence of arthritis that is called as undifferentiated arthritis so what are the most common symptoms of jia our parents should look out for in children like specifically to jia yes as i said earlier uh, jia is predominantly affecting joints so joint symptoms which i mentioned before like pain joint swelling and uh, difficulty in walking difficulty in getting up these are the most prominent symptoms the symptoms are more in morning hours so these are seen in jia in systemic onset jia as i said fever rash and presence of joint pains is predominant symptoms but they can also have a uh, like chest pain or abdominal pain because of the inflammation in the chest and abdominal cavities they can have lymph node swelling and uh, they can have again multiple uh, lab abnormalities also apart from this uh, uveitis is one of the most uh, important symptom which is more common in oligoarticular type of arthritis so uveitis is the inflammation of the eye and it can make uh, like severe impact on eye health and some patients might even go blind and sometimes this uveit is is asymptomatic the patient they don't say anything or the children they don't complain of anything and it is diagnosed after evaluation of the eye by ophthalmologist so if the patient come early in the stage of the disease we can prevent the permanent complications and the other important symptom is growth disturbances so if the arthritis if it is not recognized early or if it is not treated properly then it can cause the growth disturbances and the child's growth can get hampered so once these symptoms are identified and they bring the child to rheumatologist how are you people 
डायग्नोजिंग जे आई ए सो देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल टेस्ट विच कैन डायग्नोज जे आई ए डेफिनेटिवली दैट्स वाई अ रोल ऑफ रोमैटोलॉजिस्ट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दीज कंडीशन आर डायग्नोज बाय अ रोमैटोलॉजिस्ट ओनली सो द डायग्नोसिस रिक्वायर्स क्लिनिकल हिस्ट्री विद द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द क्लिनिकल फीचर्स विच आई मैंशन इन्वॉल्विंग जॉइंट्स फॉर लास्टिंग मोर देन सिक्स वीक्स देन रोमैटोलॉजिस्ट विल कन्फर्म द फाइंडिंग्स ऑन examination that he will confirm that there is arthritis after seeing the patient physically and then he will confirm the uh, diagnosis by some lab test like esr crp which are inflammatory markers which suggest that there is ongoing inflammation and then there are some other serological test uh, like rheumatoid factor anti nuclear antibody and in some patients uh, we need imaging like x ray or mri so it is a combination of all these factors after that only a rheumatologist can diagnose a juvenile idiopathic arthritis so what are the treatment modalities or options available for jia and uh, the most common question is is jia curable uh, i would say jia is treatable and very well treatable but uh, it may not be curable like it may be curable only in very less number of patients who have like monophasic course of the disease monophasic means some patients they have only one episode of the disease and it vanishes off and it doesn't come again this is most commonly happens with systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis but this is not common with other types of arthritis and uh, so we need to treat them on regular to regular basis but with the treatment they get very good response and what are the treatment modalities options so the treatment modalities includes anti inflammatory drug we call them nsaids then there are steroids which we give for short course of the duration to relieve the symptoms there are conventional synthetic disease modifying agents uh, which modulates the immunity of the patients to relieve the symptoms and again higher drugs are also there which are recently discovered we call it as biological therapy in which we give them as injections they are quite stronger drug but quite effective as well so these children with jia can they lead a normal life or do they face any major consequences and what is the long term expectancy is yes, definitely they can lead a normal life if the disease is diagnosed early mm-hmm. uh, and if the treatment is initiated on time they can uh, lead almost normal life but in case if there is delay in treatment and uh, if there is uh, like formation of joint deformities or there are growth disturbances because of the disease then the quality of life might be poor does this jia progress into adulthood it depends on which type of uh, arthritis like jia has six sub types so which type of arthritis is there and how severe it is there usually severe forms they usually progress mm-hmm. polyarticular forms they also progress to adulthood so out of all the varieties 30 to 50% of the cases of jia they progress to adulthood and they need extra care during the transition from the childhood to adulthood and they need regular follow up and treatment to prevent the further complications so can jia be prevented no jia is not a preventable disease mm. because we don't know the exact cause of it so unless we know the cause we can't prevent the disease mm. but the only thing we have is to start the treatment early okay. Okay. so what are the lifestyle modifications to be done once the jia is diagnosed in a child so the things parent need to learn about are like balanced diet so diet rich in anti inflammatory food like uh, vegetables fruits and omega 3 fatty acids containing food then exercise adequate amount of exercise is required which is guided by sometimes physiotherapist uh, avoiding emotional stress and avoiding additional stress to the joints which are already damaged or involved all these factors are to be noticed and uh, the parents will be helped for all this with, with by rheumatologist also as well as a physiotherapist or occupational therapist okay so coming to the end what is the take home message you would like to give to our parents regarding jia or any rheumatological conditions yeah so uh, to the parents i would like to tell that uh, uh, autoimmune diseases can happen in children though they are uncommon as compared to adults they can be seen and if we notice them early and diagnose them early then we can prevent the further complications because some of the complications can stay lifelong with the patients so please notice these symptoms early and bring them to the rheumatologist thank uh, you so
थैंक यू डॉक्टर गौरंग फॉर शेयरिंग योर वैल्यूएबल नॉलेज और इन्फॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग जे आई ए सो आई होप वी कोलाबरेट अगेन विद सम टॉपिक इन फ्यूचर थैंक यू